What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this afternoon. So what we're going to be covering in this update is a little bit of the technicals on some of the longer time frames to give us an understanding of what we could potentially be looking for going into next week's trading week. Now, in addition to this, we also have to talk about the Ortex data for AMC. On Friday, we hit another all-time high shares on loan of over 190 million shares. That's absolutely insane, the amount of shares that are going out on loan against AMC right now. Now, we also have to take a look at GameStop's data as well and go over some of the key things that we really need to understand about this data because I still see some confusion going around. Now, in addition, next week is a monthly options expiration period, so I do want to give you guys a little bit of an understanding of what the options chain is looking like. Um, and some of those if this then those statements just to kind of give us a little bit of a look to see where we could see some of that delta hedging if it's going to happen but the key things that i do want to talk about with you guys are there are so many hedge funds right now that are on the verge or have already filed for bankruptcy or closing their doors there are a lot of key implications to this that we are going to go over but this is a really important uh, aspect of our markets right now that supposedly the smartest people in the room are absolutely failing. Now, in addition to this, we also have AMC getting added to the Russell 1000 index. We've, get it, we've been getting a lot of questions about this, and I want to go over this with you guys just so you guys understand what we could expect when those dates do come around because this is semi a big deal for AMC. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. And again, if you are interested in learning how to trade, make sure you guys check out that link down below in the description um, and get grandfathered in before the prices are going to go up next month. The real-time options data just went live and unusual options activity and flow is coming along soon, along with everything else that you guys have been hearing me talk about. So AMC closed the day on Friday at $12.43, down about 2.74%. Honestly, with the day that the market had on Friday, having AMC only down about 2.74% and GME uh, ending off where it was, I'm pretty sure GME actually closed green. Let me take a quick look at this right here. Um, honestly, not the worst day in the world for these two stocks. Yeah, GME finished relatively flat. Um, but taking a look at some of these longer time frames here, specifically on AMC, looking at this four hour that we like to take a look at, again, we're kind of just bouncing around in this range right here between 12 and let's see about 14 right here, right around where this 200 EMA is. Again, we really want to see this MACD crossing back to the upside. We want to see these 1348 crosses and closing candles and specifically volume and momentum above the 200 EMA right here to give us that ability to shoot to the upside. Now, when we come over to the Ortex data here, let me just give this a quick refresh just so we have the most up-to-date data here. Um, so what we're seeing is 22.44% estimated short interest. Remember, every single time we see the exchange reported data come out, again, this week it came out on the 9th, Ortex was overestimating the data on the day that they were reporting for the settlement date, May 31st. So you are going to see some of these numbers change, but it doesn't actually change anything about the overall amount of shares that are actually sold short in the overall market. It's just how the data is being displayed to us. What has changed here? Really nothing. These stocks are still heavily, heavily, heavily shorted. But the key thing here is this 190.78 million shares on loan. That is ridiculous. We have 18.11% uh, average cost to borrow and 26.21% max cost to borrow right now. And then coming over to GameStop here, we've got 20.61% estimated short interest. Again, they were returning a decent amount of shares along with Ortex overestimating uh, the short interest on GameStop on the day of the settlement date, May 31st. Uh, so we are gonna see this number come down slightly, but again, still very, 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 very shorted. Now, when we come over to Stonko Tracker over here, I do wanna take a little bit of a look at what we're looking at going into next week with the option chain. Now, again, we know at this point how puts are going to affect price. I don't think that's really up for debate now. We've gone through delta hedging and max pain and how this affects price. When you look at this options chain right now, with 120,000 puts in the money and 7,000 calls, 
Well, you are going to see the market makers net shorting, but this gives us an opportunity to get these puts out of the money to see some unhedging and these calls in the money to see some hedging. But again, when we come over and take a look at AMC's actual options chain going into this next week's trading week, we really have to get through 15, 18 a little bit, and then 20 to really see a significant amount of these calls going in the money and then the puts out of the money 13 and 16 as well. So we do have a quite a ways to go um, in order to see that delta hedging from a lot of these market makers. Now, let's talk about this situation with these hedge funds because they are having an awful time. And I think a lot of you guys are really going to enjoy this section of the video. So when we come over to this article, this is shaping up to be the worst year for equity hedge funds on record in a sign they are struggling to adjust to a dramatic change in market conditions. Equity hedge funds, which manage around $1.2 trillion in assets, lost 8% on average in the first five months of 2022, according to data group HFR. This outstrips losses in other years marked by crisis on HFR data going back some 32 years and leaves funds with a huge task to recoup losses over the rest of 2022. The opening five months of 2020, which brought a huge drop in stocks followed by a volatile recovery, left funds down 5.8%. So the funds are down more right now than they were in that pandemic crash. Equity hedge funds are generally having a really difficult time. It feels worse for that strategy than in 2008. This is really getting nuts over here. So this year's losses are milder than the 12.8% fall in the benchmark S&P 500 index uh, of stocks, including dividends. But the supposed investment acumen of the sharpest investors in the market are still leaving holders in a hole. Hold. Now, when we come down a little bit further, the Goldman Sachs VIP index of, uh, of favorite equity positions taken by hedge funds is down 23% this year. Among those suffering losses has been Chase Coleman, a high profile so-called Tiger Cup. We've talked about them a couple of times, now down 52% in his Tiger Global Fund. Uh, and then Dan Loeb's 7.1 billion third point offshore funds have lost about 14%, while his levered fund is down 18.4%. Uh, Boston based Whale Rock Capital, which focuses on tech, media, and telecoms, has lost 33.8% in its portfolio. Tiger, Maverick, and Whale Rock declined to comment obviously. Then when we come down a little bit further, uh, I believe we take uh, a little bit of a look in here. Investors pulled $9.8 billion from long short equity funds during the first three months of the year, according to data group e-investment. This is a really, really important concept that I want you guys to understand. And the fact that these hedge funds are so wildly underperforming the market and having these significant losses leads to these redemptions. Here's why it's important. A lot of these institutions are levered up to the max at this point. Now, what this essentially allows them to do is let's say, for example, everybody kind of understands how home loans work. Let's say that you're going to have a 20% equity position and the rest 80% is going to be a loan. Now, let's say this position is down going against you and you're already facing a somewhat of a margin call. Well, your equity position could be down 25%, let's say. But then you have your investors coming in and saying, I want my money back and pulling even more of that equity out. This creates not only a terrible situation for these funds where it could immediately cause them to go under that maintenance margin requirement, but it also causes a lot more volatile moves in the market because when these, this money ends up getting pulled and they have to be liquidated out of their position, there's going to be a lot of forced selling going on. Now, I also want to briefly talk about AMC getting added to the Russell 1000 index. So first, what is the Russell 1000? Russell 1000 index uh, represents the top 1000 companies by market cap in the United States. The Russell 1000 comprises about 92% of the total market cap of all listed stocks in the U.S. equity market. So this is a big deal that AMC is getting added into this. Now, when we take a look at this, this is going to be the schedule for the 2022 Russell reconstitution schedule. So Friday, May 6th, rank day, uh, index membership el eligibility for 2022 Russell reconstitution determined from constituent market capitalization at market close. So this is kind of when they're basing the market cap off of. Now, coming down here, Friday, June 24th, Russell reconstitution is final after the close of the U.S. equity markets, meaning that if there has to be any buying or selling by these Russell indexes of what they're holding, 
That is going to be final on June 24th. Now, coming over here, 10 of these 21 stocks moving up to the Russell 1000 come from the energy and consumer discretionary sectors. AMC Entertainment listed right here. Now, here's kind of what we could see based off of this. You could end up seeing a decent jump in buying pressure uh, from AMC getting added to the Russell 1000 index just because the index is going to have to buy it in order to put it in its index. But here's the thing that I want you guys to think about. A lot of what happens in these large institutional portfolios is they use a benchmark. Um, when they do back testing and they try to figure out how well their portfolio is going to return or how well their algorithmic trading pattern is going to return, they use something of a benchmark. Now, what they can do with these benchmarks is they can pick and choose which stocks that they want to hold based on what is in that benchmark index. So what happens is, is that when one stock moves from one index to another, it gets a whole new set of eyes on it and can be traded a lot more if it is going to be added into a lot of these portfolios where they are buying and holding these positions. So you could end up seeing a little bit more buying pressure coming into the end of the month. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to squeeze or anything like that, but this is something that we do need to take a look at just based on the implications of getting added into such a large index. So that is mainly going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend and I will see you guys in the next video.